the pipe? Oh yeah, well that's a good one. There he goes. I'm just chilling in the side wash. How about that intro guys? Big things on Dyrod Fishing, but back to the fishing side of things. We're back out at the beach, and today we're gonna tackle the lifelong question, can fish really tell the difference between fishing lines? So, I have two lines in. Everything is exactly the same. Same setup, same bait, same everything. The only difference is, this one over here, uh, or is it that one, has a fluorocarbon leader, and that one right there, that one has a monofilament leader. So we're gonna see if that makes any difference if one catches more fish than the other. Uh, my feeling, well, I won't tell you my my thought yet. We'll get to wait to the end of the video, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Does line really make a difference? We're gonna find out today. beach a little ways and I think I found a good little hole right here. I think there's some fish. Both lines in. Again, both with the same crab. Got a good fish now. Got him. There's a fish. First fish of the day. Feels like a little perch. Yep, that's what it is. That right there is a little walleye perch. This is about pretty much as big as they get. Maybe a little bit bigger, but this is a pretty good one. It's pretty fat too, so I think it's pregnant. So we're gonna get this one back pretty quick. Back he goes. That's fish number one. All right, finally got the skunk off. If you're keeping track at home, that's one point for fluorocarbon, zero for monofilament. But one other thing I will say is I picked the perfect day to come out here and try this. We got super clear water behind me, bright sunny skies. If there's ever a day that's gonna make a difference between different line types, this is gonna be it. So I'm excited to see which one gets bit next. Oh yeah, well that's a good one. I think that might be a striper. That's a better fish. Yeah, it's something bigger. It's either a bigger perch or, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a striper. Yep, there it goes. Yeah, that's a striper. You can see it right there. There we 
go. That's what we came here for. Something a little bit bigger. All right, guys, there we go. That's more looking like the fish we came here for. So that right there, striped bass. And if you keep dragging home, that's now two for fluorocarbon and no, none for monofilament. And boy, did he swallow it, but we're gonna be keeping this one anyways. I got a secret recipe I've been wanting to try out with the striped bass, so this one's gonna be perfect. Perfect eating size. Minimum size here in California is 18 inches. And here, you know what, let's just measure. Just for the folks at home. So normally I wouldn't let them flop around in the sand like this, because um, it's really bad for their slime coat, especially especially this dry sand that we have right here. But like I said, I'm keeping this one, so it's just fine. Just for you guys, 21 inches. No, that's perfect eating size in my opinion. Anything that's 18 inches, minimum size, up to like maybe 24 inches. Right in that range is like perfect. Once they get past 24 inches, that's when they really start to, the, the quality of the meat starts to go down. Not to say that they're not edible. I mean, I've eaten 20 pounders before and it's it's still fresh fish. I mean, you can't beat that at the store, but um, the quality definitely goes down once you pass like 24 inches. So anyways, perfect eating size. Let's get this one taken care of and then. Oh, oh another one. how long this one was biting, busy talking about this other one. Doubled up. All right, well, not sure how long this one was on there. I was busy talking about the other fish, but this one, came along and also bit the sand crab. And this one was on the mono, so the scoreboard, two for fluoro, one for mono. We are just talking about striped bass, one for each. And this one's a little bit smaller. Probably still a legal fish. I guess he's around 18 or 19 inches, but like I said, I only need one, so I'm gonna let this one go. Luckily, this one wasn't hooked as badly, so yep, there it goes. Hook should come out, no problem. But there you go. Fish number two. First one on this rod, actually, this is the Ray Fishing Shore Shark. I kind of like this rod. I used it earlier for crab snaring. I didn't like it so much. I brought it out to the surf. There he goes. I'm just chilling in the side wash. Epic release. All right, guys, well, little chaos there. We got one on this rod and then I don't know how long the other one was biting, but they got one on the other rod here. Maybe you guys saw it on the footage before I did. But anyways, little school must have come through here. Both went off. But uh, one striped bass on the mono, and then one striped bass and one walleye surf perch on the flora. So we got both lines back in now. We'll see if there's any more out here.
Well, I know today was a small sample size, but today the fluorocarbon and monofinite pretty much fish similar. I mean, neither one of them really was definitively better than the other one. Um, one striped bass on the mono and one striped bass plus a small surf perch on the fluoro setup. And that's pretty much in line with what I was going to say in the beginning of this video is that in the surf, in my experience for striped bass, surf perch, the type of line doesn't really matter too much. I mean, you could fish 15 pound fluoro and 40 pound mono and, you know, in my experience, they're going to fish pretty similar. I don't think the diameter of the line or the type of line really has that much of a, a say in if the fish are going to bite. Mainly because I think out here in the surf, things are moving around so quickly that those fish, as soon as they see the sand crab, they have to make a split second decision. Are they going to eat it or are they not? They don't have time to like think about it. Like if you were trout fishing, you know, trout fishing, I definitely agree that, that the, the diameter of the line um, as well as, you know, fluoro, mono, that kind of thing makes a difference because I feel like in a lake, you know, there's no rush for those trout. They're just swimming by, they can inspect it, take their time, look around, you know, is this real? Is this, what's the deal with this thing? But out here in the surf, it's like boom, boom, boom. They gotta see it and they gotta eat it right away. So, you know, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Yeah, if you've had any different experiences, let me know. And if you want me to test anything else, let me know as well. So in conclusion, in my opinion, don't spend the extra money for fluoro if you're fishing in the surf. Fish mono, you'll save a lot of money and you know, in my experience, you'll catch just as many fish. But thank you guys for watching. And until the next video, hope you guys are staying safe and we'll see you next time.